Live in Health. So happy to have you here. We are a podcast focused on longevity, fitness, nutrition, overall wellness, and how you can improve your life through mastering your wellness from the inside out. We focus on application, facts. We talk about how we can implement simple tactics into our everyday life to simply feel better. Why wouldn't we want to do all of these things? If this is your first time listening, thank you for being here. And I'm I'm just happy that you decided to tune in. We're going to get into a topic today that frequently comes up. M- most commonly, I'm speaking with women, but it comes up with men too. And that is the topic of water retention and inflammation due to working out. We hear all the time oh, well, I don't want to get bulky or, oh, I feel like I'm progressing backwards or you've been working out a lot or you're you're trying something new and you feel like things are just not going in the right direction. Maybe you're looking at the scale. Maybe you're trying on a pair of pants. Maybe you simply feel your body changing and swelling and it's not comfortable. We're going to get into all of that today. Before we do, quick update. We are, like I mentioned on a couple episodes ago, we're still doing 75 Day Hard. If you're not into it, totally fine. If you are into it, great. But we are on 75 Hard. We're on day 44. Still feeling good. A quick note on the 75 Day Hard. I know that doing 90 minutes of different workouts each day can definitely seem daunting. And in some days, there have been moments where I just think I do not want to do this. And I'll be quite honest with you. I haven't missed the workouts or the the sessions, if you will, but not every single workout is an intense workout. Sometimes it's just a walk. Sometimes it's 45 minutes of deep stretching and moving and simply getting into the muscles that have been working. That's something that I knew I was going to commit to in the beginning of this 75 day hard challenge, because I don't want to get injured. It is not that like this challenge is not so serious that I want to totally tax my body and injure myself. This is more about the discipline and I totally, I love it. It's great. Really no issues with the reading or the one gallon of water a day or the alcohol or cheat meals. It's simply something that we are doing for discipline, feeling good for this big hiking trip that we have coming up, all those good things. And the reason I also had this topic for today on my mind is because of this challenge. There have been, there have quite frankly been so many times where I'm thinking, this is just not good for my body. This is, I'm more stressed out. What I realize is those, those moments are few and far in between in this challenge, it's, you know, maybe once a week I'm having those moments of, is this that serious? Do I even care? And then I realize I've already made it 44 days. Let's just keep going. I feel great. The interesting thing that I have noticed is that there have only been a few certain periods of time where I've thought, dang, I feel like I'm progressing backwards. I feel like uh, my body is actually getting more inflamed from this forty-five or this seventy-five day challenge. What is going on? And I thought to myself, Liza, what would you tell a personal training client? What would you tell a nutrition client who you had been working with? Like, what? Flip the script a little bit, and what advice would you be giving if someone was asking you about this situation? And I thought to myself, that's a really great point. Likely, you are progressing in the right direction with a few days that feel off, feeling bloated, feeling inflamed, maybe sore. The reason I think that before we get into some of these articles and details and facts, some of the reasons why I think I've really not been experiencing too much of that, and I do feel like I'm still progressing in the right direction, is because one, I felt bloated before this challenge. (laughs) This is not, not rocket science. Like I definitely experienced a lot of bloat, water retention. It's also summertime in Charlotte where it has been 4 million percent humidity. We're drinking a gallon of water a day. Like there's a lot of things that bring water to my joints right now. But I think a big reason why I'm not feeling 
incredibly bloated or incredibly inflamed by any means is because we have been taking some of these sessions for stretching and recovery and walks. It's been feeling great. I don't feel like this crazy pressure. And and honestly, people are like, oh, just take one day off. I don't feel like even in my before doing this 75 day hard challenge, I don't feel like I was going that many days ever of not having any movement. Even without this challenge, I cannot foresee myself not having at least half an hour of some type of movement per day. And I know that's a luxury and But I also know that I do, you know, I'll set my alarm earlier. I'll I'll do it later at night. Like there are some sacrifices. Again, I'm fully aware I don't have children. There's certain luxuries of time and flexibility that I I do have that fully aware of. But let's get into today because even without doing the 75 day hard challenge, excuse me, I'm recording this in a hotel room and there is a small dog across the hall who, if you hear them barking, just say hello. Hello. Even before doing the 75 day hard challenge, I would hear from women all the time, friends, family, old clients, people I would just work out with saying, gosh, I've been, I've been doing more resistance training and I feel, I just feel like puffy or I feel big. And while, while there is some research that we're going to go into that dives into why you may be feeling this and it's a normal reaction and your body is responding normally and and perfectly fine. There are things where, hey, if you're really struggling with an an intense hormone imbalance or you have extremely high cortisol levels, maybe you are getting on a new type of birth control, maybe you're getting off of a birth control, maybe you're trying to get pregnant and your body is stressing or there's, I mean, there's a laundry list of reasons why you may actually be struggling with some type of, you know, thyroid issue that is causing weight gain or a thyroid issue is that is causing extreme weight loss and circulation issues. Issues. There's, there are reasons why some of these details may not necessarily apply to you. However. What we're going to get into today is some of the common reasons why you might feel a little bit more bloated or slightly puffy once you do begin getting into a certain type of workout. Here's here's what to think about. One, the scale does not a healthy body make. Seeing a number on a scale can be certain signs of progress. But oftentimes when you think about progress, we're thinking about body composition. Do we want to be losing fat, gaining muscle? Which we think the word gain at all is bad because we associate it with something we don't want on our body. If if we're not trying to gain weight, then we think, okay, we don't want to do that. But there are some people who want to gain muscle and realize that muscle is smaller than it is more dense than fat on the body. And there is so much research showing that, you know, having lower visceral fat levels uh, is, has more ties to longevity and visceral fat levels is like the fat that you can't see the, the fat below, like around your organs. We want to make sure that the organs stay as, open and free as possible so that they can, this is, I'm getting down a a little bit of a tangent. Let's get into some of the science. (laughs) I wouldn't fuss over the scale is all I'm trying to say. I wouldn't fuss over the scale because sometimes as we begin a new workout regimen, you may also notice a total normal, totally normal and temporary part of the process of recovery, which may be water retention and and water weight gain. This is genuinely because if you think about it from a very logical standpoint, the most common reason for this is because you are working your muscles. Muscles need water to repair them. And the fluid from your body is rushing inside of those muscles 
to repair and you're going to it's going to cause some weight fluctuation and it's going to cause you to retain some of that water when you may either be sweating peeing or excreting it out in some way it's a totally natural form of inflammation some form of inflammation is good in the body because it allows your body to adapt and be able to handle certain challenges Uh, There's also reasons such as you have more what's called glycogen in your muscles. And if you are a listener who I know from Charleston or from Hilo, my guy, Jerry Phillips, who was a instructor at Hilo for a long time, really just one of the greatest dudes ever, especially in the fitness space in Charleston. I remember the day that he started talking to me, he's like, Liza, you got to get those glycogen levels up. Or, or he just started talking about glycogen. And now every time I hear the word glycogen, I can't stop thinking about Jerry Phillips. So funny. Congratulations on your engagement, by the way, Jerry. In this article, which I will put in the show notes, there might be more glycogen in your muscles. As your body adapts to training and gets better at fueling its muscles, water retention can also result. And this is all according to the Cleveland Clinic. It's important to understand first that when you are working out, your body largely runs on glycogen, which is a form of carbohydrate, and it's stored in your liver and in your muscles, and it quickly converts to energy to power your high intensity lifts, runs, rides, workouts. So what does this have to do with water? So if we're storing a form of carbohydrates in our liver and in our muscles, what is what does this do with bloating and, and water? Well, your body stores glycogen within water. So essentially, the more glycogen your muscles have on board, which might be in your muscles or in your liver, the more water they'll retain. This can also make your muscles look a little bit bigger. So after a workout, if you uh, have a little bit of muscle re- or water retention, maybe your glutes look really popped, maybe your shoulders and your delts look really popped, you're like, ooh, this looks nice. When you first start a workout routine and your body is going to think, oh my gosh, this is trauma to my muscles. What's going on? I need to store more of this gold, more of this gold in my liver, in my muscles. I need to store more of this glycogen to help me be able to adapt to this more active lifestyle, this activity. Uh, So your body is going to maybe swell a little bit more in the beginning because your body is trying to compensate for the new amount of load you're putting on your muscles. After a little while of working out, maybe a month or two, for some people, it's not, you're not going to notice a thing. For some people, it might be after a month or so, your, the glycogen storage and your water levels will find an equilibrium. They'll find that balance and say, okay, with this much exertion, we need this amount of water to water and glycogen to repair and fuel. All of this is to also say, we've also heard of we've heard of DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. Sometimes, if you or if you remember when you first got into fitness, or or when you you hadn't worked out in a long time, and then you got for a workout, and you were like, I know I'm going to be sore. You just know you are going to be sore after that workout. And I'm talking, I'm not talking the sore where you're like, mm, feels so good. I, I moved my body. No, no. I'm talking about the sore that is so frustrating. Like you can't sit. Everything you do hurts. If you sit for more than five minutes, you know, you're going to like creak and crack when you get up. Oh, it's the worst, but it does go away. That is something you want to consider. That's usually like 24 to 48 hours after your exercise. And it's, again, a normal result of doing any exercise that's like brand new or super heavy. And it's another level of that might cause more water retention because your body is like, "Mm -mm, not letting go of this. I need to recover. I'm inflamed. And, of course, we're thinking, okay, what are all these? Like, this is all... This all makes sense, but how do I properly recover? Uh, And again, we want to watch out for, I don't want to just talk about like weight gain. This isn't weight gain. This is water weight gain. And some ways to reduce it are rest, hydrate, drink more water, which might seem counterintuitive and nourish. Nourish yourself, whole foods, not a bunch of, you know, quick carbs that are just going to be stored, processed, and then as sugar, which was cause more inflammation, but get some greens, get some nice protein, get some, 
maybe some fruits and some fats. Highly recommend. We're getting into some of the next details that were coming up. When this is this is also this is interesting. Anecdotally, you're thinking, oh, I'm working out and I'm so sore. Like you're getting into this new workout routine. There is also some really interesting science that really does show how much we require rest in between and after workouts. Your body is going through a certain stress and that, and I'm, I'm citing uh, a sports, uh, Adam Rivadenaira, he's an MD, a sports medicine physician from the Hogue Orthopedic Institute and the Orthopedic Specialty Institute of Orange, California. And he's talking about the damage that exercise causes can trigger your body's immune system to repair that damage. And when your body's tissues from your muscles and bones to your heart and your lungs recover, they become slightly fitter than they were before. That way, the next time you perform the same workout, you don't suffer as much damage. So essentially, he's saying, but you do have to cause some damage to your body for it to adapt. Makes sense. This is also, it's not explicitly saying it in here, but you can you could think if your body is going through this type of shock or a little bit of damage through these intense workouts and it's using it to, you know, make you stronger, fitter, you know, what doesn't kill you, make you stronger kind of thing, it is affecting your immune system. So when when we're going out and you feel like maybe your health is declining, but you're working out a ton and you are eating really, really healthy, it could also be a natural response from your immune system you might be super tired, like, hey, maybe I just keep getting, I just keep getting sick, or I keep getting this cough, or this sinus infection, like, what is going on with my immune system? It could be lack of recovery, and when I say recovery, I mean, you might be eating all the right things, working out all the time, getting, mm, not really sleep, if you are going out and drinking afterwards. I know it's summertime, there's so much going on, we're having a great time, and you just want to go out and have some white claws with your friends. That is not allowing your muscles to recover in such a way that is going to support your immune system. So these things all work together. I think it's interesting because I was a little nervous about, I was a little nervous about this 75 day hard thinking, okay, I don't want this to affect me to the point where, you know, I end up getting so inflamed that my body is sick or like the stress of it as or I get obsessive about it, I genuinely feel like incorporating one or two or even two or three stretch sessions throughout the week, because we are doing like two a day. Well, I say two a days. There are two intentional workout or movement sessions a day. Some of those walking, some of those stretching, some of them weightlifting, some of them Pilates. Like, okay, relax. It's just two intentional bouts of movement. And it is... I, I was nervous, but I do think that right now my body is getting more stretching, more intention than I was getting even before this. Like I, I really do feel like my body is going to be thanking me afterwards if I continue down this path of ensuring consistent, steady movement. I wanted to make sure we had this conversation, guys, because not only are we retaining water when we are lifting weights sometimes, but we are also retaining water over the summer. It is really, really hot out. Our The water in our body is flooding f- or like shooting out from our muscles, sometimes causing a little bit of muscle fatigue and dehydration and into our cells because we're trying to cool off. We're sweating a ton. It's hot. We're swollen. So you might notice that's why that's why you have swollen fingers or feet or I, I notice my whole body. Everyone's like, oh, summer body. I, look, I'm down for winter. For some reason, my body just feels extra puffy just from my skin when it's super hot. I'm like, I'm not that hungry when it's super hot. And I'm always hungry. I'm a eating girl. And I, I was just thinking this was on my mind. So if it was on my mind, then I knew it had to be on someone else's mind. So if you're here with me and you're feeling the bloat, then know that you are a totally normal human specimen going through a totally normal human function. It does not mean you are progressing backwards. Do not stress. If you have questions about today's episode, feel free to check out the show notes or let me know. One thing you can also do 
is something I do every single morning. And listen closely. I have incorporated this product into my lifestyle for the past four years, and I have not looked back. Every morning without fail, I've got my Organifi Greens juice and almost three or so times a week making a protein shake and trying to incorporate the Organifi vanilla protein. I feel like vanilla is the way to go during the summer. I use, I mix it up and with a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of vanilla, but I just feel like the vanilla with a banana, with a little bit of whole milk that is organic and uh, maybe A2, you're getting a good smoothie, you're getting your good protein, and you know it's coming from a fully organic glyphosate-free, chemical-free brand with heavy metal testing. I trust Organifi. I love Organifi, and I wouldn't lead you in a direction of something that I wouldn't have on my own. You notice we don't have a lot of ads on this podcast, not for lack of sponsorship, not for lack of attention, but because I haven't, I've been reducing the amount of products that I've been using, and one that has been tried and true has been Organifi. Make sure you check it out and get 25, 20% off. Make sure you get 20% off at Organifi.com backslash HTH. That link will be in the show notes. It is all over my Instagram as well. Organifi has its own highlights. Check out the green shoes. I just got a new shipment of green apple and I love it. I'm so excited. Thank you so much Organifi for sponsoring this episode of Hotter Than Health. We will see you next week. Thank you.